getting onto the main court today? Uh, we're never on it. Yeah, we're never on it. I think, uh, you know, um, our guys have been able to shoot on game days, you know, when the court's been down. But uh, I think any days that uh, our main court is down, getting out here, getting used to the lighting, getting used to the rims, just getting a little bit more comfortable after all this is a home court. Um, so, yeah, that, that was the biggest reason. And knowing today we we're going to blow it out and get up and down in scrimmage um, just felt ma made sense of scrimmage where we're going to play our games. What were some of the biggest takeaways from the scrimmage today? Uh, guys competed. Yeah, it was. Uh, we mixed up a lot of the lineups. You know, the lineups, groupings that we'll see throughout the course of a game, and uh, you know that that's always fun to watch. Who's playing well together? We need some more reps. What can we clean up? Um, I think the referees have the hardest job in the world. I don't care what kind of referee you are. I mean, the guys that get paid. 15 bucks to come in and do this. It's so not worth it. I, <laughs> I mean, gee whiz. Um, but no, today today was uh, was really good. We can definitely clean some things up. Tomorrow we'll scale back, kind of control things more, uh, working on some special situations and some things defensively. But um, it was definitely a, a positive step in the right direction towards Thursday night. When Peyton's playing catch up and he's in a unit that's going to have a couple of newcomers what do you kind of want him focusing on in, in reps like this to gain a chemistry with with those guys well one get in shape you know obviously he was out for so long and he did everything he could in that time to stay in shape but you can't replicate playing and so i think you know obviously this is a great opportunity for him to get up and down push himself to get in that game type uh, type of shape um but yeah and getting used to playing with russell westbrook getting used to playing with a guy like dario Saric. Uh, Jamal, Julian, whoever else may be out there with him. But regardless of who he's playing with, he has to have the same mindset. I'm going to go out there and first and foremost be a guy that's going to really impose his will on the defensive end of the floor. Whether I'm guarding a one, two, a three, a four, or a five, I have to bring energy on that end of the floor. Offensively, obviously, play with an attack mindset, get to the basket, finish. And if he doesn't have that, look to make plays for other people. Um, but it was just good having him back on the court playing and getting up and down because he wasn't able to do so for the, you know, pretty much the entire preseason. Russ was pretty vocal in the part of the scrimmage we got to see. Has that been an all day, every day kind of thing? Yes. Has it ever become too much? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I don't think you can have enough um, communication. You can't have enough agitation. I, I like that kind of stuff, man. Get guys going after each other uh, because if we just come in here every day, buddy, buddy, um, you're only going to get so much better. But when you're talking shit and getting under people's skin and that becomes contagious, he was so excited today when other guys started getting into it. And, and he was like, man, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm, I'm accomplishing my goal of uh, being an irritant. And, and I love the fact that he brings that every single day. Like when the little snapshot you guys saw, that's him every day, man. And it's not phony. It's, it's real. He gets after it. He's hardened himself and he pushes his teammates. And, uh, and I love it. Who's the last guy you guys had that was kind of like that, that agitator, I guess? Um, you know, I think uh, IT, you know, I, I think he was a guy that was, same thing, was always talking. Um, you know, little guy, but a big chip on his shoulder. Um, hell of a player. Uh, Will Barton, right, a little bit. Um, but I, 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 there's not many guys like that. There's not, you know, it's just, uh, there's not a, a, a normal trait and, uh, and I think for our group, and we have such a great group, special group, a group that's won a lot, but having a guy that's going to kind of stir the pot and, uh, and bring an edge every day, you know, uh, for me, you know, I, I love that shit. I really do. Have you, seen, have you seen that edge rub off on the rest of the, the team just quite yet? Or a little bit, yeah. Different? You know, that's why he was excited today because he saw, like, you know, some other guys kind of, you know, getting into it and talking and being – you know, not just quiet as a church mouse. You know, I'm going to be out here, man. Yeah. If I'm out here, you're going to hear me. You're going to feel me. And, um, you know, it's, uh, again, you know, right now, I think it's a great thing. If it ever gets out of control, which I don't think it will, uh, then we can handle that internally. But, you know, uh, competition's healthy. I mean, let, let's not shy away from competition. We got guys pushing each other. You know, we, we have the nine, ten guys that are buying for minutes and, uh, you know, I think when guys are going after each other in the right way, which we are, that's not only going to help him get better, it's going to help you get better.
And so I, I love that part of the, the competitive spirit that we have. We saw a little bit of Nicolo working with the reserves today. I'm curious what you thought of that, and that's, if that's something you want to do a little bit more this year or something you want to experiment with. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, Nicola's got to be able to play with, you know, a lot of guys. You know, um, we always laugh when everybody says, well, this guy plays better with Nicola. Well, <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, not everybody can play with Nicola because Nicola can't play 48 minutes, at least not to start the season. <laughs> um, so getting him out there with Jamal, Christian or Julian, and Michael and Aaron is great. Getting him out there with Dario and Vlatko and Hunter and Zeke and other guys as well, because obviously when he's out there, he's just a great guy to play through and play off of. And uh, what you love most about Nicole is his ability to make all those guys better. How difficult is it to stagger a starter and play ten at the same time? Uh, very hard. You know, obviously, uh, you know, as you guys know, for years we we've, we've usually gotten Jamal and or Nicola out to have one of them in the game at all times, and uh, you know. I'm not saying we're going to do that again this year or not, but in the past, when you take one of your starters out to get them back in, now it makes it really hard to play five guys off the bench if you're bringing that one guy back. Um, but, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see what's best to start this season and, uh, and, and how we're playing and what we need. And obviously we'll determine all those rotations based upon that. Um, but it, it makes it difficult when you're trying to get one of those guys out to play a full 10-man rotation and give each of those 10 players a, a real chance to play. It's, I, a guy can go in for two minutes and he's out. You know, that's, that's hard to do in this business, but I know that if I asked some guys to do that, they'd be more than ready and able to do that. Do you want to treat the first few games as a chance to experiment more with that, or do you kind of go into it with a, with a decent idea of what it's going to be and it might just be one or two? Yeah, I mean, right now, after five preseason games and a number of training camp practices, I have a pretty, a pretty good idea of how we're going to go about it early in the season. And obviously, uh, we'll, we'll see how those results are going, positively or negatively, and make whatever changes we need to make. Um, and again, with Jamal, I put myself in his shoes at times. You know, playing the first six coming out, playing the next three to close the quarter, start the first three in the second coming out and closing, that's a little bit choppy. You know, and uh, obviously Nicola usually plays the first nine sits and comes back and runs the last nine of the second. Um, so you know, I also want to do what's going to allow our players and individually and collectively to have their best chance of having success. So um, we'll see how it goes early in the season and make any necessary adjustments. First thing, uh, I live, sleep, eat, breathe basketball, so it's good to be back. Um, it was hard watching during the preseason, wanting to be out there and help our team win, but I'm glad that I'm back now, and when, when it really matters, I'll be back. Have you kind of felt the whole time like you would be in position to, to play opening night, and that it was just a matter of the impatience seeing through the preseason? Yeah, 100%. You know, there's always, you know, times, like, I start feeling good, or I'm like, I feel like I can play tomorrow. But it was all about, you know, taking the necessary precautions, especially with this soft tissue injury, that it didn't linger and that I was here um, and more available for my team than not. So I think ahead of the 82 game season, I got, I got a good amount of rest, good recovery. So I'm ready to go. Is there anything that you feel like you need to kind of catch up on the most in terms of the, the missed time and the missed reps that, that you had in those games? Just getting back in shape. I was in incredible shape before I got injured. That's one thing that was really disappointing to me because I had worked really, really hard on my conditioning. Um, and just getting back to that level of condition is not easy, especially out here. So I'm just doing what I can, putting in the extra work to get back on track. Coaches talked about your hunger to get back. Your teammates have talked about it. You've talked about it. Like, what does that feel like for you? What did it feel like watching? And, and why are you so ready to get into action here? I just, I mean, it's really a, uh, for lack of a better term, it's really just like a helpless feeling, you know? Um, seeing your guys go out there and playing hard and not being able to do the same. I think anybody who knows me just knows that I really do love basketball. So not being able to play basketball is taking me away from something that I love. Um, and, you know, I'm a big part of this team um, just vocally and um, just responsibility-wise. So I think everybody was kind of every day just asking me, when are you going to be back? Are you back today? Are you back tomorrow? When are you back? And I just felt kind of a little bit of responsibility to be back as fast as possible. But everybody also did a good job of reminding me that this is an end all be all and that we got bigger stuff ahead of us. So uh, it was tough, but I'm glad to be back, like I said.
how do you scratch the basketball itch when you're not able to be on the court doing stuff? Just anything you can do, really. I mean, I remember when I first got hurt, I, I always keep a basketball in my crib, obviously. So whether that's just laying down on my bed, just shooting up at the ceiling. Um, or, um, and then once I got a little bit better, I started just coming back at night shooting shooting with Julian, shooting with Mike. So I still had that camaraderie because you, what you don't realize when you get injured is that you're separated for the team. Like the team's doing one thing and I'm over here doing BFR, getting treatment. So I miss the camaraderie a lot as well. Um, just being able to, you know, crack jokes with my guys and just hear the locker room talk. So, yeah. It seems like Julian's really taken advantage of a larger opportunity so far. He had the most points in the preseason. Just what you say it's, as somebody who's very close to him, just how hard he works to kind of put himself into that position. Oh, yeah, that's my guy. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely not only proud, but um, this is something that I almost expected, you know, when it's time. To, he's a hooper. And when it's time to hoop, he, he's always going to get to it. So I'm definitely proud of him um, for taking this shit seriously. Excuse my French. <laughs> but just taking it seriously, doing the right things, coming to work with it, his hard hat on. And that's, that's not something to be taken lightly. Anytime you leave the league in anything, I think that's something that's pretty special. So I'm super proud of him super happy for him and I'm happy for us too because he's on our team so he's going to be helping us win a lot of games and um, I'm glad for him. You obviously know Russ you have a relationship with Russ but has there been anything that surprised you about what he's brought to this group so far or what you've witnessed from him? Uh, yeah I think mainly just the the mentality he instills in everybody I think the confidence that he exudes and um, just how ready he is to come in and work every day has rubbed off on a lot of us you know this is a 82 game season this is it's not easy work we're in we're in here from eight to one every day so um i think that russ makes it just enjoyable to be here and he almost he's so his convictions are so strong that it makes everybody else feel like maybe i ain't doing enough so he makes everybody work harder and i'm really um thankful to him for that how do you see yourself fitting into the second unit with with how you've seen it kind of shape up perfectly um seamlessly i think that we got a really good unit I think we got a little bit of everything, everything that we need. And just my defensive prowess and um, how seriously I take the game, how hard I play, I think that it's gonna be an easy, easy mesh with that lineup because we got Russ, we got Julian, we got Dario. We got a lot of business-minded approaches to the game. So I think that that unit is gonna, we're gonna be able to hold our own. And um, I think that we're gonna definitely be able to rely on our unit. So I think with the advancements that I've made defensively, knowledge-wise, and offensively just slowing down, I think I'm gonna be a perfect fit for our team. Like, I feel like I have been. You're a very dynamic shot blocker. Are you still working on that? Uh, you feel like you're getting better at it or have you worked on it throughout the off season? I mean, it's hard to work on because it's a live action instinctual thing. Um, but I think that that goes into like my conditioning, um, watching a lot of film and just gaining more knowledge about the game. And I think that it's a skill that I don't really know how I acquired it. I don't really sharpen it a lot, but it always seems to happen where when we have a game, I get a block. So um, I'm going to continue to play hard. I'm going to continue to try to help my brothers out on that end of the floor. And uh, hopefully it ends in a statistic called the block. Is there a spot <laughs> on the floor, just like a place offensively, where you say, oh, this is like really where I feel the most comfortable? I definitely say uh, out on the perimeter of the wing. Um, that's just always where I've made a majority of my decisions on a basketball court since I was could remember. So um, I'm definitely comfortable out on the wing. Playing the four last year in the dunker position was something that I had to learn. You know, it wasn't something that came naturally to me. And I think we all saw as the year went along that I got more comfortable in that position. So I think that going you know back to playing a, a lot on the wing this year, um, I think that that's just you know where I'm most comfortable. But I'm really a Swiss Army knife. I'm ready to do whatever the team needs me to do, you know. Nicole, how's the day today? How's the practice? Good. It's a little bit cloudy outside, so practice is okay. Uh, we played a little bit just to get up and down. Uh, it was decent, I think. Uh, I mean, hopefully it's good. I don't know. We will see in a couple of days. What's something that you guys feel that you need to continue improving before the season? I mean, everything. I think we didn't play the, the preseason to how we're supposed to be uh, playing. Um, the, the defense was not where it's supposed to be. We couldn't make shots, so we played really bad and poorly. 
the whole preseason. So hopefully we can uh, do something a little bit better when the, when the season comes. Where do you feel like you guys are at from a conditioning perspective? Uh, I mean that's a personal question. I think uh, I think I'm good. I think most of the guys are good. So today we look good. So I think uh, I, I think it's okay. How important has it been for Julian to have the preseason that he's had, especially coming off a strong summer league for him uh, good. I mean, I think it's for every player. It's really good uh, when he plays good. So for him too, uh, he he's building the confidence. He's making shots. He's putting the ball on the ground. So he's uh, he's playing really well for for us. After an all season, does it ever take you and Jamal a little time to get back on the same page, or does it happen pretty instantly? I mean, I think it's not just him. I think it's the old five guys on the, on the floor who's playing at that time. You know, and it's not just two players. So. We also see. I think we played good today, uh, but when the season comes, it's, all, so it's always different. Different. What are the benefits to mixing up the teams like you guys did today, having some of the bench guys play the starters and vice versa? I mean, I think I, I, I might think we should do that even in the game, just to give, 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 give teams different look. Um, you know, so I, I like it just to play with somebody, somebody else, and uh, why not? So much of the preseason is about just getting used to new faces and new, new people. Gus and Dario, you were playing with them, with them today. Just how do you feel chemistry-wise with those guys so far? I mean, uh, they, they, they I mean, not they. We all want to get better. I think that's the most important thing. You know, we have that positive, uh, positive energy. Let's say like, we want to do something uh, and we want to be better. So hopefully, hopefully, uh, we're going in the right direction. Uh, you know, uh, Dario is really high IQ player who can play in a four and a five, who can stretch the four, who can post up guys. And Russell is a oh, probably all-time player, all-NBA player. So, you know, we know what, what he brings to the floor. I didn't get a chance to ask you about this on Media Day, but I'm curious what you think this group's mentality is being the hunters once again instead of being hunted. I mean, it's a different team. So, yes, but it's a different team. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think we have, we want to, we, of course, we want everything else to win a championship. And we have a, I think we're going to have a good energy, good chemistry going to the season. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.